Hello again, the same old project and uh, let's talk a little bit about this little fellow here LX-LCBST or better said a battery charge board DC to DC step up boost module with TP4056. We can apply a voltage from a lithium cell and we can boost it up to 28 volts. So it's a perfect solution for a 9 volt battery inside a multimeter and many, many other devices. So this little device have three different parts. We got this part here as a battery charge controller. Then we have this part here with this circuit, which is a battery protection or cell protection, in fact. And up here, we have the boost converter. Let's start with this one. Very classic cheap uh, TP4056. It's a low cost lithium ion uh, IC controller. It supports constant current charging mechanism, constant voltage for single lithium cell. What's important here, we have this resistor, which by default, it's uh, 1.2 kilo ohms. And that makes the circuit charging the cell with one amp, 1000 milliamps. Uh, changing the value of this resistor here, we can have uh, charging currents from 50 milliamps to one amp, of course. Now, let's say if, if we have a 10 kilo ohms over here, we're going to have around 130 milliamps of charging. This circuit is doing a perfect job. There are a few LEDs here showing when it's red is charging, when it's blue, it's finished the charging. You know, it's a very intuitive uh, device. All right, let's go to the next one, which, by the way, was the main concern or the main uh, question mark. Now let's talk about the cell protection circuit, because I've been asked about that. In my case, it's a circuit named MK. G or C, I think it's G to F. But uh, in some literature, I could find it under HM5454. And we have the data sheet about this. You know, uh, this circuit, it's uh, doing uh, all the protection necessary for the cell. It's disconnecting the cell once it reaches 2.5 volts overcharging the cell, over voltage the cell. In fact, it's easy to find information about the circuit uh, on the internet. And of course, the next part, it's this one here. This is the boost, the step up converter. So this is um, MT3608. Here on this particular board, we have another uh, mark like 86 to eight or something. Anyway, so this circuit, it's responsible with stepping up the voltage and it's working uh, to a high frequency. I think it's 1.2 megahertz doing all this uh, step up conversion and it's going up to two amps. Okay, so we have MT3608, 1.2 megahertz, two amp step up converter. Two amps, that feels a lot for me, you know. It's going up to 28 volts, operating input voltage from two volts to 24. It have a current limit at four amps. That means a lot. You know, I have doubts about that, but uh, the original have really, really nice uh, characteristics. So behind the board, we have these two contacts here and a T letter, you know, a T symbol. If we check the schematic, somehow the battery or the cell minus goes to the ground. What that means? In the moment when a cell have its own protection board, let's open this guy and let's see what I'm talking about. So this is a, a Sony cell from a mobile phone. And theoretically, we should have a board here with a protection circuit and of course there we are you see this is a protection board applied by the manufacturers of these uh, cells in this case 
we don't need to use the onboard cell protection because the battery or the cell itself has already this protection incorporated. In this situation, we have to short these two contacts, just solder a piece of wire. If you use a simple cell like this one, this one got absolutely no protection, nothing, this needs to be applied with the protection on board. So don't short this. If you use simple cells like this, or, or like any other cell, you know, as long as they don't have incorporated protection boards. Okay? Now, I've been also asked if there is any protection to short circuit at the output. Let's take a look and let's do some experiments about that. We need some wires, soldering iron, battery plus. We have the green color on this okay plus goes here in the meantime until i'm finishing the the setup here let's put it to charge we should see some red led and by the way as long as we are here let me see the charging current we have the charging light and now it's charging with zero zero point thirty eight almost zero point four amps almost two watts of charging okay nice let me see about the standby current we have a kind of 200 micro amps this is the standby current of this device and that means almost nothing it can be on standby for <laughs> months or something okay so that's the output wire 20 volts let's power on we have 7.38 volts. Okay, let's put it higher. Let's say 18 volts. You see, what's happening if I'm just shortcutting these guys? I don't recover. Yes. So look here. This is very, very nice. Do we have a of course it's getting a little bit hot okay short look at the protection you see nothing wrong happens here nothing wrong once again it was interesting first time the current went up but uh, in a split of a second and now it's not growing anymore, you see? So we are in short now at the output of the converter. And we have like 30 milliamps. But evidently nothing wrong happened to the circuit. So I can say it's safe to have a shortcut at the output. Doesn't hurt the device. Nothing wrong happens. We should do another experiment, and that's about the polarity of the cell. Let me change the polarity. Maybe I should use a kind of fuse. This is minus now. So I reversed the circuit. Now I'm using a resistor of 22 ohms to see if anything happens. Okay, let's go. Well, that hurts. We have 130 milliamps. So people, I'm pretty sure, and the resistor is getting hot. So I'm pretty sure that first protection circuit will be burned if you reverse the polarity. Let me check with a lower. So this is a 10 ohms, 280 milliamps. You know something, people? Don't try that. It's getting hot for sure. With this kind of amps, a battery can supply. The input circuit will be blown. Okay, let's try this. This is a bare piece of wire. We should see it burning. Oh, 
4 amps. Oh, I can feel the smell already. Let's make it longer for higher resistance. Let's see. It's burning. You see that? 3.28 amps. Yeah, this one is hot too. So probably the diode inside there is doing the job. Maybe a kind of 0 0.5 amps fuse. It's a good idea. Maybe. But now, that's the question. Is still alive? Battery. Evidently, we saw that I didn't push it too much. But um, we have 4 amps easily. But I can say that I played safe. <laughs> Will it be alive? What do you think? Good question. Let's see. It's alive. Is it? Of course it is. This is a huge load. Let's see if it's able to light this. That's the output. We have 19 volts. No way. No way. It's way too much, of course. But, like I said before, short circuit at the output protection. It's working great and I don't need anything more. Is it charging? It's not charging anymore. It says the battery is full. How much voltage do we have on this battery? Huh? I'm a little concerned about the accuracy of this multimeter here. 4.11. So, uh, you know, the, the module is considering the cell full. So it's not charging anymore. Okay. Let's see the output. Yeah, 17 point. It's safe to short the output. Nothing happens. My concern is about reversing the input polarity, the cell polarity that will destroy the protection for sure. Well, like usually, I really hope it's useful. And uh, don't forget, subscribe to my channel, press like, like always, that will help me a lot. And uh, any question, don't hesitate, comment, write them down. I'll be happy to answer. In the meantime, have fun. Bye-bye.